Hey, it's me here, and today I'm going to talk about cloud skills and how they're different from sub-agents and projects and why this matters and how you can apply it for work and what they actually are. So let's dive into it. With projects, um, you're essentially using them as workspaces within Claude uh, or even ChatGPT as well. And what it comes is that it's essentially a set of system instructions that are repeatable instructions you want to follow. It has context and files you've uploaded. It has memories and access to tools. Projects are specifically great for collaboration, like kind of like a school project. And you're able to use it with other team members. So say, for example, you're part of a marketing team and you have a set of ongoing repetitive tasks or instructions you want to follow. For example, you are a marketing expert in analyzing in marketing data and creating reports. It has a persistent knowledge base and memories for continuous tasks, but the thing is you have to um, constantly update the instructions over time based on the tasks you want to complete, and also make sure that you have uh, contextual files you've uploaded that are being regularly updated based on your new data that are coming in or whatever your needs are. Um, I would say it's great from a sense that you can always have repeatable instructions in there, but um, I'm going to talk about why skills could be an add-on to projects within projects and as an individual chat. So if you don't want to have any uh, consistent context or instructions in there, and I'll get, I'll get back to that. So with sub agents, this is another subset of, you know, specialized skill set, um, but this is more applicable for Claude. And what this is essentially is you're able to spin up individual agents um, to break down complex tasks or workflows into individual ones with specialized agents. So say, for example, you're building a very complex feature and you want to delegate the, the front end to one agent and the back end to another, and they're going to be focusing on specifically that. So for example, you know, you have uh, an agent that is building out the UI and the agent that's building out the back end API endpoints. And the context is isolated to that conversation window. So whatever context you provided and, you know, you gather in that conversation. Now, skills are very interesting. What is it? With skills, you're automating a lot of the workflows and tasks that can be applied both at an individual chat level and at a global project level as well. And it's great for uh, tasks that you want to set the constraints for, the guidelines, and the steps are built for, for by you. So say, for example, you know, Kaparthi says how you have AI as your coworker. Now you're giving them an extra skill set for them to follow step-by-step -step instructions on. And you can create like very detailed instructions for it to follow and it can be repeatable, laser focused on a task, and you can give context as needed and have embedded scripts as part of it for it to follow in the instructions. So you want to run actual code. Why does this matter? I think part of it is because LLMs are so non-deterministic, you can essentially have some sort of hallucination or the wrong output or too much context rot that degrades performance. And there's a whole paper about context and what is the right amount and how much context you should give and how you should prompt that. So I want to kind of show you some use cases and how this would compare to, for example, um, a project instruction or system instructions and what skills compare to against that. But, uh, you know, there's some documentation online on how to actually create custom skills. And we'll go through an example together of what that looks like. Um, but you can also read the docs uh, yourself. Um, but also here, what's interesting is that Claude itself talks about why skills matter for your work. The example they provide here is you essentially have a set of tasks that you've already figured out what works best and you want to structure it better. So say, for example, um, it enables you to package that expertise. So before skills, you had a project that helped you with quarterly business reviews. So Claude can already build presentations, but to get it to match your standards and or stay up to date with your standards and your preferences, you would have to document those guidelines in a project. And it doesn't always automatically apply that. With skills, you're able to use that within a project context or individual chat context, and then ask it to create that presentation for you by referencing that skill. And it would automatically apply those guidelines and constraints. So it's very much, again, very refined focused set of instructions that you can use. And, you know, if we're, it fits really well within projects. So again, the, the, the links are here, take a look at it. it they really talk about kind of um, how the, this fits into the workflow ecosystem of Claude and how you can essentially refine your approach with the skills. Now, I have a set of, um, I need to analyze some data and I've essentially given it a marketing data, sales data, contact data, like some close contacts and some web traffic as well. And I've said, hey, give me insights uh, from these documents in this format. And I've essentially, you know, given the data and the format I'm expecting and this LLM is going ahead and, and making these calculations for me. It's read some code. 
Now, what's interesting here is two parts. This is likely, it is a weekly task that I have to do every single week, but also at the same time, um, not only is it repeatable, but the, there is a possibility of hallucination or a wrong calculation happening by the LLM. Now, this is where skills shine, where you can essentially create a skill directly uh, within Claude and have it follow the steps exactly created by you. So I went ahead and created a skill myself. I said, hey, um, I want to create a skill that can analyze a set of Facebook data through web traffic and give me the insights I need on funnel conversions. And I provided a sample file as reference for it to follow. Now you can create skills directly in settings. So you should go to capabilities, in settings, capabilities, skills, and then you would do the skill creator and you can click, uh, click on try and chat. It would open up a chat and then you say what skill you want to create. So I've already created one called the funnel analyzer. And what it looks like is something like this, where it says, it's essentially a, the name of the skill with a front matter on, you know, a specific set of instructions it has to follow. Um, and then a script to actually analyze the data and metrics, which is like a reference, uh, a glossary for it to reference uh, as it's calculating this. So I went ahead and created the skill in the skill creator. And then um, I loaded that skill into the, you know, into the settings through here as a zip file called funnel analyzer. And now we're going to actually try it and see what that looks like. So I'm going to click on try and chat, or you can go and chat directly and just like write, use my funnel analyzer skill. So we're going to drop in the files here and let's see what happens. Ideally, it uses the skill, it follows the scripts directly, and gives me the insights that I need without any room for error or hallucination, and the fact that I don't have to repeat exactly what output I'm looking for from the insights. So it's going through all the files, it's reading the skill, it's looking at all the files, it essentially says, okay, cool, I have all the six files I need. Now it's gonna actually write the script, and it should be, yeah, analyze funnel. Yeah, perfect. Now let's see what happens. And there we go. So we got a executive summary on what our spend is, our revenue generated, cash collected, and what our ROAS is, and essentially what our current CAC is. So I took a repeatable step, created a skill around it, and I'm using add-on scripts to actually calculate exactly um, what metrics I would need and insights I would need from this. So you can see it has a little bit of a difference between um, what we had captured here um, and then um, what that script is essentially displayed uh, earlier. Now, keep in mind, I had to just change the data a little bit from this original chat and then this new one, um, just because I I realized I need to like switch up the numbers and take out a field because there was an error in how I was analyzing it. But the point is, what the key takeaway here is, We've taken a repeatable step, created a skill around it, and we're decreasing the likelihood of any hallucination or errors as part of this process. So I think this is really, really helpful in the sense that we're not only getting, we're, repeat, we're automating a repeatable step, but also have more confidence in the output and the insights that we're getting from this. Um, anyways, I hope I've covered kind of how this is different from, from projects and sub agents, how you can apply it for your work as well. And what you can do, like, for example, I did like a marketing insights analyzer that was looking at more top of funnel than revenue. I built one for AB testing for Humbleytics, where it essentially analyzed the site and gave me, um, experiment ideas and, um, it gave me some like suggestions on what to run experiments for and even artifacts as well. Hope that was helpful. Thanks.